Deputy Ministers of State, Chief Director of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, the outgoing U.S. Ambassador to Ghana, her spouse, and officials of the U.S. Embassy in Ghana, the Dean and members of the Diplomatic Corps, fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome all of you warmly to Jubilee House, the seat of Ghana's presidency, especially the Dean and members of the Diplomatic Corps, on an occasion which is rare on the diplomatic calendar of our nation. This is the fourth time in the history of the Fourth Republic that a foreign diplomat, a creditor to Ghana, has been honored by the government of the day. One American, one British, and one Chinese diplomat have been so previously honored. Her Excellency, the Honorable Stephanie S. Sullivan, is the second American diplomat to be so acclaimed, and for good reason. During her period as U.S. Ambassador here, 2018 to 2022, the enhancement of the already good relations between Ghana and the United States has been evident and visible. Whether in the area of trade or health or agriculture or governance or security, we've witnessed a significant expansion and consolidation of the ties between our two countries. And at the heart of this process, has been this indefatigable, consummate professional, the Honorable Stephanie S. Sullivan, who has devoted her career to serving her great nation in Africa with Ghana so far, the highlight. The bedrock, the foundation for the relationship between the USA and Ghana has been the mutual commitment of our two nations to governance systems based on democratic values and democratic institutions. Indeed, it's no secret that the post-1966 constitutions of the Second, Third, and Fourth Republics of Ghana, the latter the most enduring, have been heavily inspired by the tenets of Jeffersonian democracy that underpinned the celebrated constitution of the Federal Republic of the United States of America. A passionate adherent of human rights including in particular women's and children's rights. She's been relentless in her efforts to bring the experience and assistance of her country to helping improve our governance system, especially in improving the quality of our electoral system. We're very thankful for her efforts that have helped us to undertake the most transparent election in the Fourth Republic in 2020 and enabled us to cement our reputation as a beacon of democracy and stability in Africa. Again, we owe her special thanks for the exceptional assistance Ghana has received from the United States during the co current COVID-19 pandemic, when access to vaccines for countries such as ours, which do not produce their own vaccines, has been a difficult and harrowing experience. Her strong affinity for our nation enabled her to assemble at our moment of need significant supplies of vaccines from the U.S. government for our use. We shall always be in her debt. Today's tumultuous, turbulent world, where both the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic and the effects of the Russian invasion of Ukraine have brought about unprecedented strains and difficulties in the global economy and in global security, represents a moment of seminal importance for the reinforcement of relations between friendly nations. We have a lot to be grateful for the work that the Honorable Stephanie Sullivan has done to deepen the relations between Ghana and the United States at this sensitive time of world history. We in the New Patriotic Party have had the benefit of working with the Honorable Stephanie Sullivan on two occasions. The first, between 1997 and 2001, 
when we were in opposition with myself as opposition spokesperson on constitutional and legal matters, when she was political chief of the U.S. Embassy in Accra, and the second, during this period, when she's been the number one of the U embassy, the U.S. ambassador, and we have been in government with myself, whom she knew well in her first stay as president of the republic. She has seen both sides of us. I'll leave it to her in her memoirs to tell us which she prefers. <laughs> it has been, from our point of view, a happy association, and I'm delighted to have this opportunity to register our appreciation of our work in our country by this award of state honor of Grand Medal. It is fitting and well deserved. We wish her well in her future endeavors, and we hope, and indeed I can say with confidence, that her impending departure from our shores will not be the end of her association with our country. Madam, Your Excellency, Best of luck and God's blessings. You go with our affection and respect. Your Excellency Stephanie S. Sullivan, you were born on 27th of September, 1958. You graduated from Brown University with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Classics and obtained a master's degree in national security strategy from the National War College. Your professional career started as a Peace Corps volunteer in the Democratic Republic of Congo, 1980 to 1983. And you later worked as Chief of Peace Corps Operations for the African region, 1994 to 1996. You joined the Department of State in 1986 and was posted to Cameroon the same year and ended your duty tour of that country in 1988. You later served as a desk officer for Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso in the Bureau of African Affairs at the Department of State in Washington, D.C. from 1991 to 1993. Between 1997 and 2001, you served as the political chief in the United States Embassy in Accra, Ghana. Between 2002 and 2010, you served in various capacities in the Executive Secretariat Operations Center at the U.S. State Department in Washington. From 2011 to 2013, you held the position of Chief of Staff to the Deputy Secretary of State for Management and Resources. As a result of your competence and devotion to duty, you were deservedly appointed Ambassador of the United States to the Republic of Congo from 2013 to 2017. In July 2018, you were nominated as the U.S. Ambassador to Ghana and on January 23, 2019, you were fully accredited as U.S. Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the Republic of Ghana. Since your accreditation, you have contributed immensely towards strengthening Ghana's bilateral relations with the U.S., especially in the areas of trade, health, and security. During your tenure, Trade relations between Ghana and the U.S. have witnessed a significant increase in volume. For the period 2018 to 2021, trade volume between the two countries doubled, totaling 2.7 billion United States dollars, with Ghanaian exports to the U.S. in 2020 alone amounting to 136 million United States dollars. You have been influential in increasing the number of American companies and subsidiaries currently operating in Ghana, with a recent significant addition being Twitter Africa. In the area of health, 
your instrumentality, commitment, and exceptional advocacy skills resulted in Ghana receiving 9.7 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines from the U.S. to support government in achieving its vaccination target. Defense cooperation between the Ghana Armed Forces and the U.S. Armed Forces has deepened during your tour, with the U.S. offering to officers of the Ghana Armed Forces various training programs, such as the International Military Education and Training, IMET, and the African Contingency Operations Training and Assistance, ACOTA, programs. Ghana's participation in the regional U.S. strategy under your purview has been expanded to prevent conflict and promote stability in five coastal West African states. The U.S. also supported Ghana in hosting the multinational maritime exercise dubbed Obangami Express in 2021 with a view to improving Ghana's capacity in maritime security in the Gulf of Guinea. Through U.S.-Ghana security collaboration, Ghana benefited from two level two field hospitals, one of which supported the country's initial COVID-19 response. Again, through your relentless efforts, the Millennium Challenge Corporation's Ghana Compact was extended to June 2022 with 316 million United States dollars Ghana Power Compact helping to improve the reliability of electricity supply and contributing to empowering women in the energy sector. The USAID has under the Power Africa Initiative facilitated the connection of about 225,000 households in Ghana to the national electricity grid. In the area of governance, your commitment to enhancing the credibility and transparency of Ghana's 2020 presidential and parliamentary elections saw the USAID train and deploy 4,000 election day observers and also employ a parallel vote tabulation methodology to verify independently the presidential results declared by the Electoral Commission. Your efforts at garnering support for the flagship initiative of government, the Ghana Beyond Aid, is commendable. During the period, you launched a 19 million United States dollars agriculture program, which seeks to increase access to agricultural finance for select staples and commodities such as maize, groundnut, shea, soy, mango, cashew, and other high value export commodities over a four year period to improve the family income of producers, especially women. You promoted women economic and youth development through programs such as Academy for Women Entrepreneurs. Your tenure as ambassador to Ghana witnessed the National Spelling Bee Competition and USAID's Literacy Program for Children. In recognition of your outstanding contribution to the socio-economic development of the Republic of Ghana, and your dedicated disposition as a diplomat, which has helped enhance mutual understanding and cooperation between Ghana and the United States of America, the Republic of Ghana hereby confers on you, Your Excellency Stephanie S. Sullivan, the State Honor of Grand Medal, GM Honorary Division, dated the 7th of April, 2022 here at Jubilee House. I thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration. <laughs>
Your Excellency, Ambassador Claudia Turbay Quintero, Dean of the Diplomatic Corps, Regional Deans and other fellow diplomats, Reverend Akwea Ofori Boateng, distinguished friends and colleagues, all protocols respectfully observed. I'm deeply humbled to stand before you today and receive this great state honor of Ghana's Grand Medal, which I accept on behalf of my outstanding team. I remember the fanfare when presenting my credentials more than three years ago and could not have imagined then that I would return to Jubilee House today for such a meaningful send-off. I'm enormously proud of the many accomplishments we have achieved together during my service as Ambassador of the United States to the Republic of Ghana. Thank you, Excellency and Honorable Regional Min um, Minister of Foreign Affairs for recalling some of the highlights of my tenure. There are so many cherished memories among them which represent the long-standing partnership between the United States of America and Ghana and how we have continued to advance our shared democratic values and common interests. Our well-rooted partnership will endure long after my departure, thanks to the generations of diplomats, diasporans, partners, and friends who have contributed to our shared history and our interwoven links and ties. Indeed, we all stand on the shoulders of our ancestors. Just as I reaped the harvest of what Ambassador Robert Jackson sowed, I'm confident that my successor, Ambassador Virginia Palmer, will continue to water the seedlings we planted in my time, as well as plant new crops. Meanwhile, the U.S. Embassy will be in the very capable hands of my deputy, Nicole Chulik, soon to be chargé d'affaires ad interim. Nicole, can you stand up, please? When I reflect on the past three plus years, I'm proud of how we invested in people making a major difference in the lives of thousands of Ghanaians in public health, literacy, clean water, agribusiness, and peace and security, of our substantial improvements to Ghana's energy infrastructure, providing more reliable electricity to millions of Ghanaians, of having built stronger economic and commercial ties and helping bring American companies to Ghana, creating new jobs on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean and of our support for Ghana's COVID-19 response with supplies, equipment such as ventilators and oxygen plants, training, and more than 9.6 million life-saving vaccines. Our relationship has grown just as Ghana's regional and global leadership continues to grow from strength to strength. We worked side by side to promote regional peace and security and supported Ghana's positive role in West Africa under your sterling leadership, Excellency, as ECOWAS Chair for the past two years. I look forward to seeing how the strategy for preventing conflict and promoting stability that President Joe Biden announced just last week will be implemented in Ghana as one of five coastal West African nations included in this 10-year regional program. Let me also voice the United States deep appreciation for Ghana's leadership at the United Nations Security Council and throughout the UN system, defending the cause of freedom and of right. We have deepened both official and people-to-people -people ties with reciprocal visits by US and Ghanaian officials, including the memorable White House meeting last September between Your Excellency President Okufuado and Vice President Kamala Harris that I was privileged to attend. The year of return attracted many of my fellow Americans to connect with Ghana in person, notably Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi and 13 members of the Congressional Black Caucus, including the late great civil rights icon, Representative John Lewis. On the less official front, we offered professional, educational, and cultural exchange programs to young Ghanaian leaders. We empowered hundreds of women to flourish in Ghana's economy through entrepreneurship training and other professional development activities. We trust you will continue, Excellency, to steward the economy in the face of these global challenges that lie ahead for all of us through enhancing the enabling environment and continuing to improve the investment climate to bring more jobs. I'm thankful for the support the Embassy has received 
from people throughout the length and breadth of this beautiful country, which has made our successes possible and which lays the foundation for our future successes. And I'm profoundly grateful to count you all in this room among the many wonderful people my husband John and I have met and among the old and new friends we have made here. This group includes you, Mr. President, whom I left as Attorney General in 2001 and later saw from afar become Foreign Minister and then President of the Republic. When we returned to Ghana in December 2018, our own year of return, it was truly a diplomatic Sankofa moment, coming home to a country where we had enjoyed Ghana's legendary hospitality for four years. Imagine my delight in presenting my credentials to your good self. I have come to cherish the wisdom conveyed through the many proverbs and symbols that offer guiding principles, reflect values, and highlight our common humanity. In fact, this room is the emblem of Adinkra symbols and wisdom. I'm reminded of another Adinkra symbol, konsan konsan, the chain link, which depicts how we are all connected. I know I will continue to feel that connection long after I depart Ghana's shores. John and I will hold Ghana in our hearts when we leave in a few days' time. Thank you again for conferring on me this immense state honor, which is emblematic of the effective and growing partnership between Ghana and the United States. May the United States and Ghana continue to prosper and deepen our partnership forevermore. And before I with the podium, I really want to um, acknowledge my dear husband, John Sullivan, who has stood with me through th thick and thin. John, can you please stand up? Okay. Thank you again for this great honor and for your kind attention. The event, the event coincides with uh, the departure of...